I wanted to get at least one of these on video. So let's work through number three. And so what I want to show here uh, first is the domain range. Let's do those. Okay. So the domain and range of this function. Now, recall the domain is the collection of all the x's that get used somewhere by my function. So the furthest left x value that gets used would be this x value right here. And that is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is negative 6. So our domain is going to start at negative 6. And we'll include negative 6 because that is a closed in dot. Or in other words, there is actually a point that has an x value of negative 6. That one right there. And where does our domain end? Let's see. So all of these x values get used by some point. What about a negative 5? Here the graph jumps. But there is a point that uses the x value, sorry, that's a negative 4. There is a point that uses the x value of negative 4. That's this point right here. So even though uh, our graph jumps, our domain is going to be, is going to continue past negative 4. Likewise here, at negative 1, there is a point that uses the x value of negative 1. It's that filled in that right there. So again, we don't have any breaks in our domain. Still good, still good. So it's all the way up until positive 6. And we will not include positive 6. That is an open circle, meaning there is not actually a point that has the x value of negative 6. What about the range? OK, what's the lowest point? Or the lowest y value would be negative 2. Again, included, because there is actually a point that has that y value. And the highest y value is positive 3, also in the loop. Okay. Part B, we want to give the intervals of continuity, where it's increasing and where it's decreasing. Okay. So just looking at the graph, you might intuitively see that it is split up into four different pieces. So those four different pieces that we see on our graph are going to be the four different sections of our interval of continuity, our four different continuous pieces of the graph. So here's one. And for all of these intervals, either continuity and continuity decreasing, we're going to be looking at the x values. So continuity, our first section of continuous graph would be from the x value of negative 6 to the x value of negative 4. Now, our graph is not actually continuous at negative 6, because that's where it ends. And it is not continuous at negative 4, because there's a jump. And so even though there are dots there, we don't include this in our interval of continuity. It's not continuous at those points. The next section of continuity is going to be from negative 4 on the x-axis to negative 1. And again, we won't include the inputs. So negative 4 to negative 1, that's this piece of graph. The next section is from negative 1 to positive 1. And then from positive 1 to positive 6. Okay, that's continuity. Next, where is our function increasing? So we can see it's increasing here. And again, we want to say what x values it's increasing at. So it's increasing from negative 6 to negative 5 on the x-axis. And again, it's not actually, or we're not going to include the endpoints for any of these intervals here. So it's not actually increasing, say, at negative 5, because it switches from increasing to decreasing. Or at negative 6, it's not going to be either, because it's not part of a continuous section of the line. So it doesn't increase. Oops. It doesn't increase from negative five to negative four. It actually decreases. So I'm going to add that to my decreasing as a uh, an interval where the function decreases from negative four to negative two. Our function increases. And then from negative two to negative one, our function decreases. I'm going to put that in the decreasing category. 
from negative 1 to positive 1 on the x-axis, our function increases. And then from positive 1 to 5, our function will decrease. And then from 5 to 6, the function increases. Okay. Next. And finally, we want to look for any relative or absolute maxes or mins. So part C, do we have any relative mins or relative maxes? And then we'll look at absolutes. So remember a relative min is going to be like, I'm sorry, a relative max is going to be like the top of a hill. A relative min is going to be at the bottom of a valley. So here's a relative max. Again, it has to be part of a continuous interval, and it has to be where the function switches from increasing to decreasing, like so. So there's one. And here, um, you could say we have a relative max at the point. And so we're going to give the coordinates here. So that's at negative 5, 1. That's not an interval. That Those are the coordinates of the, of the point. Do we have another relative max? Yeah, here's one. And that is at point negative 2, 3. So also at the point negative 2, 3. Do we have a relative min? Yeah, there's one right there. So the relative min would be at 5, negative 2. That's the point, 5, negative 2. And the others, this would not be a relative min because it's not on a continuous interval. Same as this. This would not be a relative max for the same reason. Okay, so it has to be one of these hilltops or valleys. Do we have an absolute max and an absolute min? In this case, we do. So what is the highest point anywhere on the graph? It is this point right here. So it's it's at a y value of 3, that's higher than the rest of the graph. And so this occurs at the point negative 2, 3. That also happened to be a relative min. That's OK. Sorry, a relative max. Do we have an absolute minimum? Turns out we do. And that was this point 5, negative 